Hello and welcome to the second tutorial on the Kenta Music WordPress theme. In this tutorial we are going to see how to customize the visualization aspect of your website. After installing the theme and all the required plugins as explained in the first tutorial, you can then go in Appearance, Customize. At this page you will be able to change several aspects of your website, such as logo, colors and much more. Your changes are going to be visible in real time in this side of the screen. We are going to see now one by one all the different sections of your customizer and see how they work. First of all we have global settings. This page is a miscellaneous of different settings that you can change. Hide past events will automatically hide all the events that have a past date. So if an event is already occurred in the past, it will no longer be displayed in all your event archives. This regards the load more pagination. So if you have this enabled in the blog page, you will have a load more button at the end. Otherwise, you will have normal pagination. Intro header regards single pages. When you open a page, when the intro header is on, you will have a nice fading effect and the page will have a height change when scrolling. This works with every custom post type. Breadcrumb is regarding this part of the website. So if we go in any page that is not the home page, you will see the breadcrumb appearing at the top of the page. You can hide or show it using this switch. Then the last one is the debug setting. This is very useful if you are a developer or if you are having any problem with some foreign plugin that is causing any conflict with your website. When we enable debug settings, every JavaScript file is going to be loaded as a separate file instead of a one single minified file. Normally, debug settings are off. If you are seeing any error in the customizer, in the debugger or anywhere else after activating any plugin or you want to create your own version of the JavaScript files, you can enable the debug setting and the function.php will automatically load a separated non-minified version of the JavaScript files for this theme. For normal usage, it is recommended to leave this off. Then we have site identity and these are the normal settings that you can use as website title, tagline which actually is not displayed anywhere in this theme and site icon. Header and menu style. This is where you can change the logo. If you remove it the website title will appear and then you can choose different menu style. This is centered and this is the default one with logo on the left and menu items on the right. This is regarding website background. It is possible to load a default picture that will appear as background for all the pages that doesn't have a specific background. This is going to be used for archives and any other page. As you can see, this is the background. To choose another one, you can just drag your picture there and it will automatically appear. This slider will be 
Very useful if your background picture is too light and you cannot read the text on top. As you can see, you can make it darker or lighter till zero to avoid any black transparency on top of it. It is as well possible, even though not very recommended, to add a YouTube ID and have video background in every page. This is cool but is recommended only for websites with few pages, just in order to have a better navigation flow for the users. Then this option will allow you to use a nice fade out effect on scroll. With this effect enabled, the background picture or video will disappear when we scroll. This is very useful if you are in a single page and you want to have the background go away and have a better readability of the content. This section is about the secondary layer. This theme allows you to add contents on a hidden layer that stays underneath the main content. You can access the secondary layer when it's enabled by clicking this button. You can see that the secondary layer has a custom background and custom contents. The secondary layer can be enabled in two ways. Switching on this option or adding a menu to the secondary layer menu slot that we will see further on. So if you have a menu in the secondary layer it will be visible even if this option is turned off. This other option will allow you to use negative colors. This is useful if your background has a picture. This will make that all the text on top of the secondary layer will be white. This will make that all the contents on top of the secondary layer will have a light color. This lot is to change the background picture of the secondary layer. The secondary layer cannot have a video background. Then you have the possibility to add special contents including short codes to your secondary layer. You can edit these contents directly here or in text mode. Use any short code you want or in alternative go to appearance widgets and you can add some widgets here. Color customizations. This theme is based on the popular material design framework. As Wikipedia says, material design, codename Quantum Paper, is a design language developed in 2014 by Google. This very interesting concept is based on usability, so its primary objective is to have a nice user experience for your visitors. For this reason, instead of having colors for header, footer, font and so on, this theme allows you to create a color scheme that will be used across all the parts of your website. Material design says that you will have two main color choices, primary color and secondary color. In this particular theme, we also added an accent color that is going to be used on very specific elements to have them pop out on your design. You can then choose a text color on top of the accent color and then a page background paper background and text. It is very very important to understand that for this scheme to work you need to choose very bright colors for accent and secondary. In this example they are different colors but you can even choose the same color for accent and secondary if you don't want to use too many colors. 
primary, primary large light and primary dark are going to be used specially for header and footer. In this part you can choose the color for the normal pages and paper background which is used particularly on cards and content elements. The text is going to have the same color on top of paper and on top of the page, so please pay attention to not choose white page background, black paper and white text, because this will work if you are writing on top of paper, but will not work if you are writing white on top of a white page background. So it's very recommended to have similar colors for page and paper and a high contrast color for the text. The last option is about the menu text. When not scrolled, you can customize the color of the menu text by changing this option. Once scrolled, the menu will use the color on top of the text color primary. In this section you can manage the menus. This theme has three menu locations. Primary, which is this, footer, which is here, and off canvas menu, which, if set, will appear in this page. We can then restore the default color for the menu text. If you want this to use accent color, you can delete the option completely and leave it empty. Typography option. You have one, two, three, four and five font pickers. You can choose among more than 600 Google fonts for this theme. Anyway, it's very recommended to not add too many font families in order to save a decent loading speed. Default fonts are Open Sans and Montserrat. In our example, we are going to choose different fonts. For example, we are going to use for the text, Atitilum Web, Atitilum Web Bold, for the bold text, a Rubik Mono One for the headings. Even if not used, we recommend using the same font for the header if you don't want to specify anything else and if you are especially using an image for your logo because otherwise it will be loading a new font family for no reason. Then you can specify another font family for all the buttons and menus and similar. We are going to use Titilium Web Bold. And here we go. In the social network part, you can specify which connection you want to add to your website. As you can see, you have a lot of very professional websites like Bitport, SoundCloud, Juno, Mixcloud, MySpace, Snapchat, Spotify, Track It Down, and other very music related social network that you will not find in most of the other websites. Then it comes to the footer customization. You can enable or disable footer widgets, change the copyright text here 
and you can use or disable parallax effect for the footer. To change the background of the footer, you can upload your picture here. Then it comes to the widget slot. There are two sidebar where you can add your own widgets. One is the bottom sidebar, which is here, and one is the footer sidebar, which is here. If you want to add widgets in other pages, like a single post, you need first to visit that page. You will see that a new sidebar slot will appear, and here you can manage its widgets. Here you can change the home page settings. It is recommended to not set a post page. Why? Because our blog archives have the possibility to add your own customizations like a custom header and title. If you're going to choose your blog page in the post page, WordPress is not going to be able to retrieve its customization. Instead, you can set the page you like as home page. So, if you like a particular home page of our demos, you want, for example, the page two or three or four, you can change it here. And this is our new home page. In this section, you can add your own custom CSS. Please be careful with this option because this is for developers and is recommended to hire one if you are not able to create CSS. Once you're done, remember to click Publish. With this phase, the customization are going to be saved and we can move on to the content creation. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video tutorial.